Welcome! My name is Caitlin and I'm an educator for King County Wastewater. Hi, my name is Charity and I'm also an educator for King County Wastewater Treatment. We are so excited for you guys to be here today with us for our lesson. We're going to be exploring the wastewater treatment plant together today. Charity, do you remember what wastewater is? Yeah, so wastewater is all of the water that goes down drains inside of buildings. So that's the water that goes down toilets, showers, sinks, dishwashers, and washing machines. Caitlin, what's one way that you've used water today? Hmm. I've used water today when I flushed the toilet. What about you? Hmm. I've used water today when I wash my dishes. What's one way that you've used water today? So when we use that water, when we flush the toilet or do our dishes, we're adding all kinds of gross stuff into that water, like soap and toothpaste and human waste, like poop and pee and puke. Once we use that water, it goes down the drains and it makes its way to get cleaned at a wastewater treatment plant. Think back, if you brushed your teeth this morning, that water you brushed your teeth with is actually already on its way through underground pipes to a wastewater treatment facility. So today in our lesson, we're gonna be thinking like scientists and engineers. We're gonna be learning about how scientists and engineers have come up with solutions to getting all of that dirty stuff out of the water. We're gonna be seeing how they have come up with solutions to remove the trash, organics, bacteria, and chemicals. What does the word engineering mean? Great job! Engineering is using science and experimentation to come up with solutions to problems. If you were thinking about problem solving, you've got it. I think we're ready. Are you guys ready to go see the wastewater treatment plant? But wait, Caitlin, we need safety gear first. Okay, we are super excited to get going and show you around the wastewater treatment plant. Before we get started, which category do you think we remove from the water first? Do you think it's the trash, the organics, the chemicals, or the bacteria? All right, if you guessed trash, you are correct. Trash is all the biggest stuff and it's the easiest for us to remove first. So, People flush all kinds of trash. How do you think we deal with it here at the wastewater treatment plant? Look, the mechanical arm is scraping the trash off the bars. Let's take a closer look. Okay, all of that trash, all of the wipes, paper towels, all of those things, after we scrape them off of the bars that we just saw, get grinded up into tiny pieces and put here into this giant trailer. This is what one week's worth of grinded trash looks like. After all of this trash is collected and grinded, it has to be taken hundreds of miles away to a landfill in Oregon. Do you know why trash is such a problem at the wastewater treatment plant? All of those wipes and paper towels get stuck in pipes and get stuck in our machines like this. When that machine is stuck full of all of that trash, it can't work properly and water can't move through it. 
thing that you can do to help us is only flush the four P's. What do you think the four P's are? Nice job. Poop, pee, puke, and toilet paper. Those are the only four things that we should be flushing down the toilet. Once the trash is removed from the water, we need to get out the big poop and food and bits of grease. How do you think engineers have designed these machines to remove those things from the water? Check out these tanks. Look at the surface of the water. What is floating on the top? What do you think those rotating scraper bars are for? In these tanks, we remove the big pieces of poop and food and grease by just using simple gravity. We let the water sit in these long tanks um, for a few hours and all the heavy poop and food settles to the bottom and the lighter things like the grease and oil will rise to the top. I have a model here that can explain that and give us a better visual aid. So inside my model here, I have a bottle that is full of water, just half water, and cooking oil and sand. So remember a model represents something, right? So our sand is going to represent all of our heavy poop and food that's in this water. And our oil is gonna represent all of the fats and oils and greases that are in the water. So even when I let this bottle stop shaking for even a few seconds here, all of the oil and grease rises to the top because it's less dense. So you'll see that layer right here. And all of the poop and food or the sand in our model will sink to the bottom. So you'll see three distinct layers. The same thing is happening to the tanks right here. At the bottom of this tank, you'll see these long scraper bars that are moving and pulling all the heavy poop and food, so the sand in our model, into a deeper part of the tank, where from there it'll be collected and piped into big structures called digesters, where we'll break down all the poop and food and make a new recycled product. We'll talk about it a little later in the video. Awesome. So we have now talked about how we remove the trash, and most of the organics out of the water. Next, we're gonna learn about how the bacteria are a super important part of this process. When we go over there, I want you to think to yourself, what are you noticing about this water? What does this water remind you of? Look at this water! See how it's bubbling and frothing? What are we adding to the water to make it move like this? So in our tanks, we're pumping these tanks full of hot air. That hot air is activating and waking up all the teeny tiny microscopic organisms that are helping us clean the water. The big microbes are using the warm air added to the water to grow and reproduce. They are feeding on the small bad bacteria that could potentially make us sick and they're also feeding on the remaining organics in the water like the poop and the food. The microscopic organisms in this tank are so small that you could fit 10 of them side by side and it would only make up the width of one human hair. In this next step, the water comes to this lazy river that's behind me, where it gets in contact with a chemical that's similar to bleach. This sterilizes the water and kills off any of the bad germs that could have accidentally made it through to this step. So this is the last time that you'll see this water as it flows over the waterfall here um, before it begins its journey back out into the Puget Sound. 
This is my favorite part of our whole tour. So this is what the water looks like. Remember, right when it enters the treatment plant, really gross and full of icky stuff. And then this is what we call our final effluent. So this is what it looks like when it leaves. So at this point, what did we remove from the water? Think back to the beginning, right? We had organics in the water, poop in the food, chemicals, we had bacteria, and we had trash. So you've seen us kind of step by step remove those things from the water. What might be left though now in this final effluent? So at this point, we've removed the organics, the trash, and the bacteria from the water, and many of the chemicals. The only thing that's left in this water at this point is some nutrients and trace amounts of chemicals. Now, where are those chemicals coming from? Those chemicals are coming from cleaning your house and shampoo and conditioner and things like that that we use every day. One thing you can actually do to help us take better care of our system and the Puget Sound is think about the chemicals that you use. I, when I am at the store, I look for chemicals that say they're biodegradable or green cleaners because I know those will break down in the wastewater system and won't make their way out to the sound. Remember earlier how we collected all of the poop and the food and the oils and the greases from the bottom and the top of the tank? We're gonna now take a closer look and find out what happens to all that stuff. All of the poop and the food that we collected from earlier ends up in that digester. What does the word digester make you think of? A digester makes me think of my digestive system as it's breaking down my lunch or my breakfast. This is our digester, look how big it is. Digesters like this one are like giant stomachs. We put the organics, like the poop and the food, in the digester for 30 days at 98 degrees so that microscopic organisms can break down all of that material. After the 30 days, it comes out as a rich source of nutrients that we can use to put in soil to help grow food. The material that comes out of the digester we call a biosolid. A biosolid is just a fancy word for super rich nutrients that we put in the ground to help grow food. These trucks behind me are going to farms in Eastern Washington to grow food like apple trees, conifer trees, and wheat. If you've ever eaten an apple from Washington State, it's probably been grown with loop. Check out how big these trucks are. Seven of these every day leave here to go to farms to help grow food. Most of that water that you just saw is on its way out to the Puget Sound, but some of that water we can save and reuse it. So the water's not quite ready to be drinking water yet, but we can save it and use it for something else. What do you think we can use that water for? Great, so if you were thinking of using that water to water plants, you're right. That water, even though it's not drinking water yet, is actually has nutrients in it that are really great for helping plants grow. So we actually pipe that water um, out to farms and golf courses and even soccer fields, like the soccer field where the Sounders practice. So right now we're at our food farm that's actually located at our wastewater treatment plant and you can see these awesome purple pipes flowing around all of our plants. So the purple pipes are transporting that recycled water right to our plants to help us grow things like blueberries right here. We like to think of this recycled water as super water. It's water that would normally be going out to the Puget Sound, so we're conserving water by using it to grow plants, and it's full of nutrients that the plants need to go really big, like our raspberries here. Think about it, the water that you use today could be in just a few days helping us water our blueberries and raspberries or swimming around with the orcas in the Puget Sound. Thanks so much for coming with us on the tour of the wastewater treatment plant. What's one thing you learned about wastewater today? 
today we learned about how to be a water steward. A water steward is somebody who takes care of our water system. So what's one way that we can take care of our water system every day? Great job! If you thought of a couple of these things, you're on the right track. Awesome. So one of the ways you can take care of our system is by only flushing the four P's. Remember the four P's from earlier? That's poop, pee, puke, and toilet paper. Those are the only things that should be going down our toilet drains. Another way you can help us is by conserving water, meaning using a little bit less water. So for example, when you're brushing your teeth, make sure you turn the faucet off as you're brushing. Another way would be to take shorter showers. Awesome. You can also be careful about what kind of chemicals you're putting down the drain. So if you're at the store with your family looking to buy cleaners, looking for chemicals that say that they're green cleaners or biodegradable cleaners. Those are things that are going to break down in our system and won't end up in the Puget Sound. You can also choose to use less cleaning products too. Nice. And last but not least, just share what you learned with your friends or your family or other people at your school. Talking to other folks about how they can be stewards of our water system is super important. Thanks for joining us today and we hope that you become a water steward. Yeah. Bye! Bye!